We live in what has been referred to as the age of anxiety. But the problem of worry is not unique to our generation. Jesus devoted an entire section of his sermon in Luke 12 to this subject, a sermon that was addressed to his disciples. The Lord told them not to be anxious about what they were going to eat or what they were going to wear. If he had to rebuke them for worrying about the necessities of life, what would he say to us about the things that occupy our thoughts and our attention? Our word, worry, comes from an old English word that literally means to choke or to strangle. When the wolf bit down on the throat of the sheep, the shepherd said that it was worrying the sheep. And Jesus used this in this way in the parable of the sower when he said that the seed becomes choked with worry. Luke 8 and verse 14. If we're not careful, then we too can allow worry to choke us to the point of death. But why is this? Well, worry chokes our faith. Jesus calls the anxious men of little faith in Luke 12 and verse 28. That's because faith and worry cannot coexist. Just like you have to choose between God and mammon as to which you will serve, you have to choose between faith and worry. Jesus' simple solution to this faith crisis was to look around. He says, consider the ravens. God feeds them. Will he not care for his own children? He says, consider the lilies. God clothes them. Will he not provide for his own? It should be enough for us to know that God knows. Instead of acting like those who don't know God's power and promises and provision, we must remember that he does know, that he does care, and that he is able to solve our most basic as well as our most difficult of problems. There is nothing that God cannot do. We need to allow our faith in Him to choke out the worries that are in our lives. But worry also chokes our time. In Luke 12 and verse 25, Jesus says, Which of you, by being worried, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? Friends, worrying does not change anything. We become like the hamster that is in that wheel, just going around and around and around but not ever going anywhere. That's how life seems to be at times. We go round and around, but we never accomplish anything. We never reach those goals that we have in life. But we must remember that this life is short. It is but a vapor, James 4 and verse 14, and then it vanishes away. But how much briefer does it become when the time we do have is fretted away with anxiousness? In fact, it has been said that man is crucified between two thieves, the regrets about yesterday and the worries about tomorrow. Worry doesn't lengthen life, it shortens life. It's been proven that you can worry yourself sick, you can worry yourself into the grave, and all too often we worry about those things that are never going to happen. We need to let the value of what little time we have left keep us from being worried with the cares of this life. But worry also chokes our peace. In Luke 12 and verse 29, Jesus says, and do not keep worrying. How many of us have ever said, well, I'm just gonna worry for a little bit of time and then everything else is gonna be okay. Folks, it don't work that way. We realize it does not work that way. We have to be willing to lay those things aside, to completely remove them from our life, to cast them upon God. And as the psalmist said in Psalm 46 and verse 10, we know this because we're told to be still and know that He is God. We spend time in prayer. Instead of being anxious, make your request known to God. Cast those cares upon Him and have faith that He will work those things out. Worry sets our minds on things below and not on things above. We're told to seek first his kingdom, and all of these other things will be added to us, Luke 12 and verse 31. That's where our focus needs to be in this life. When we concentrate on being a Christian, we will gain the proper perspective on everything else in life. We need to let our concentration be on the kingdom and allow that 
to choke out the worries of this life. Thank you for joining us for our program today. We pray that God blesses you with a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend.